Good morning, Hope Church. It's great to see each of you, and thanks for tuning in to this broadcast. It's wonderful to be a part of God's family, and even though we're separated by time and space, I'd like to just imagine for a moment that I'm sitting next to you on your couch or wherever you might be watching this, and I just want you to feel that sense of family and that sense of community and that sense of belonging. We're doing our best to keep in contact with you and to make sure that you know that we care about you and that we love you. And if you haven't been contacted recently, please let us know. It's not something we're doing intentionally. We want to try to stay in contact with everyone in our church and those in our community as best we can. We're looking at a couple different things to try to change things up a little bit. And one of those things was to try to get together on Pentecost Sunday, May 31st, on the ball field and have a service. It just doesn't look like that's going to be able to work for us to get together in person uh, unless something dramatically changes between now and then. But what we are going to try to do is do an online prayer and praise service on Pentecost Sunday. So in the evening on Pentecost Sunday, we're going to gather here and I'm going to have Lester come over here and play the keyboard from the platform. And we're going to have a Pentecost Sunday service here at Hope Church. And we'd like for you to tune in. That service will be at 6 p.m. So we'd like for you to tune in to that service if you could and be a part of that. We're going to have testimonies and praise and a time of prayer on Pentecost Sunday here at Hope Church. So we hope you'll join us for that and be a part of that. And to John and Christine Lopez, a shout out to you. Thanks for being willing to come and be a part of the service on the ball field. And for others who emailed me and let me know that you wanted to do that, I would love to do that, but there's just a lot of logistical things that we have to work with and keeping everybody safe and getting everybody up to the ball field and all the things that have to go along with that. So we're not going to be able to do that, but uh, we're looking forward to some other things that we can do, like the Pentecost Sunday service here at Hope. The other thing that uh, we're looking at is forming small groups of two or three. One of the things we've noticed is that on Zoom, when you get too many people on the call, you really can't fellowship, you really can't communicate. So we're looking to put groups of two or three together to do a weekly hangout and time of fellowship and Bible study. And if you'd like to be a part of one of those groups, please let me know. You can email me, you can call me, you can call the church office, you can also call Christine Lafada. We're looking to put together small groups of people on a weekly basis to do Bible studies and just to hang out and just to be in community together. Because if you get more people than that on a call, it just gets uh, to be too much. So we're looking to do that. If you want to be a part of that, please let us know. And we'll definitely connect you with two or three of your brothers and sisters in Christ who can encourage you and help you through this time. Because people are so isolated that there's a sense of, of, uh, of loneliness that comes along with that that we want to make sure that you don't feel, that you stay connected even during this time. And so as we enter into worship now... Let's just pause for a moment and recognize God's presence here with us as Tyler and Krista get ready to lead us in worship. Let's pray together and ask God for his blessing over this time of worship. And just before I do that, I want to continue to thank you for your stewardship to the church, for your giving to the church, and for your faithfulness in giving. We have been noticing a shortfall because of all of this. So whatever you can do extra, please do that if you can. And we appreciate it very much. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the gifts that people give and the things that people do sacrificially during this time. Lord, we know there's a lot of uncertainty, and so we just ask your blessing over the finances of our congregation and over our church. And Lord, we also pray that you would just be with this time of worship as we come into this place to worship you in this time we've set aside to worship you. And wherever we may be and whatever... Uh, atmosphere or context we may be in, whether our home or an office or wherever we may be. God, just bless this time of worship as Tyler and Krista come now to lead us into worship. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Hope Church. We're super excited to worship with you today, and we just want to enter into a time of worship, but first let's praise our Heavenly Father through prayer. Father God, you're awesome. You deserve all praise and honor and glory. 
And we're thankful to come here today and gather with you online. And um, Lord, we, we know that you have faithfully brought us through this, this time so far, Lord, and we just pray for your continued guidance, um, that you would be dwelling in our hearts through faith. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. it be the one who died has borne our sin through sacrifice to conquer every sting of death sing sing alleluia for joy awakes as dawning light when Christ disciples lift their eyes he stands the friend and king Christ, Christ he is
Thank you for being a God that's trustworthy. You're so faithful to us. We can't praise you enough, so we get eternity to do it. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, Hope Church, it is awesome to worship with you. We are so thankful for each and every one of you. Now we'll pass it over to Pastor Matt. Have a great week. Thank you, Tyler and Krista, for that wonderful music. It is important for us to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word. And when I think about what it means to take the word of God and take the promises of God and apply them to my own life, I think of somebody in the story of God who left a place of captivity and slavery, saw God do amazing things, and came all the way to a place where they had to make a decision. They came to a crossroads, and they had to make a decision. He was picked out of hundreds of thousands of warriors to go into the place where they were supposed to go and bring back a report. Along with 11 other men, he went into this place and came back and stood before all the people to give his report. Out of the men that went with him, only one stood with him. The other 10 said, the place is filled with giants. There's no way we're going to be able to conquer this place. And because of their lack of faith, he had to walk around with those people for another 40 years before they came back to where they needed to be. A whole generation lived and died before he was allowed to finally go back to the place where he had been standing and saying, this is the direction that we need to go. For those of you that don't know the story, the story is the story of a man named Joshua. And Joshua stood next to Moses during the time that they traveled through the desert and was his right hand, was somebody who helped him and somebody who fought with him and fought for him and went through all of the journey and someone who had walked with Moses for decades through the desert as the generation that would never see the land of promise walked around in circles until the next generation came. A whole generation had to pay a price for not believing in the promises of God, especially when it came to the promise of a place. You see, God had promised Abraham as part of the covenant, not only would his descendants be as the stars of the sky or the sands of the sea, but he also promised him a legacy of place, a land of promise. And I've been thinking about a sense of place during this time of confinement and quarantine and what it means to have a place. We're all in 
a place somewhere right now trying to stay healthy and trying to stay well. And the promise that we have is that the people around us who care for us and love us will help us and will always have a place. But Joshua stands before the people of God and he's at a second crossroads. The first crossroads is where he went with those other men into the land of promise and came back and the other ten men said, there's no way we can do this. The man who stood with him, Caleb, said, yes, we can. We just have to believe in God's promises. So here he stands again at his second major crossroads in his life. And Moses has passed on. He's the new leader. And now he stands before his people. And we have this great opening to the book of Joshua. Of the 24 chapters of the book of Joshua, we have this great opening in chapter 1. So if you have your Bibles, go get them or read along with me as we look at Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. And let's unpack this a little bit this morning and think about this story. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid. Here's what the Lord said. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give to them. I could unpack the number of promises just in these few short verses and it would take more time than we have this today. But I want to look specifically at the promise of place, your territory, what that would look like as we look at a map. And it's interesting as we look at the maps of the world and you look at the different times in history where those maps were drawn, how the lines have changed over the centuries for almost every country in the world. If you look around the world and you look at all the different countries in the world, the lines have come and gone and empires have fought, have risen and fallen over these territorial boundaries and lines. You can remember the great saying of what it means to cross the Rubicon. That was a river that Julius Caesar crossed, knowing that once he crossed that geographical boundary, that river, that he was making a statement to Rome. And we all know that he ended up conquering and being a great general. But that was his crossroads, the crossroads of our lives and the crossroads of the lives of the people of God many times come to a boundary, a place where we make a decision about who we are and what we are. And Joshua was standing at this great crossroads, this boundary of the Jordan River. As it says, get ready to cross the Jordan. And so as Joshua is standing at the River Jordan and looking across that river and thinking about what's on the other side, God's describing to him these boundaries and the interesting thing about the nation of Israel that still exists today is that almost the same geographical boundaries exist today as are described right here in Joshua. There's never been a country, there's never been a place, there's never been a group of people who have consistently kept the same boundaries of their nation over time like the children of Israel. There's not one nation in the world that's had the same consistent boundaries as the nation of Israel for as long as they have had it anywhere ever in existence. Because God has a covenant with his people. God still has a covenant 
with the Jewish people. And the nation of Israel that exists today on the same geographical, basically the same geographical lines as were described here is not a testimony to the people who live there, but a testimony to the faithfulness of God's promise to a place. The city of Jerusalem that exists today is not just an accident of history. It's part of the covenant that God has with his people. And we are a part of that same covenant because as we think about Joshua and we think about a person who walked with God, he was not afraid of what he came up against because he knew that God was going to see him through to victory. And as he, as he begins his journey as a leader, God promises him that the things that he had seen so many years ago we're going to continue. The things that he had said, yes, I know there are giants in the land. I know there are problems. I know there are challenges and obstacles that we're going to face. But God's going to see us through because he's the one promising us this place. I don't know where you're at in your own spiritual journey or your own spiritual walk as we're all sheltering in place and we think about what that feels like and what that looks like. We think about all the things that are happening financially and all the things that are happening around the world with all the things going on. God has promised you as part of his design for you and his plan for you, not just an opportunity to do something or to work or to do. He's promised us a place in, in the New Testament, as Jesus is leaving his disciples, he tells them and he gives them this promise. I go to prepare a place for you so that when I come again, I will receive you unto myself that where I am, you may be also. It's interesting that we have this Greek version of the name Jesus, but actually the Hebrew way of pronouncing this is Yeshua, which is actually the name Joshua. And so as we connect the dots of the history of God's plan for the world and the story of how we get to where we are, Joshua, the forerunner here, as he stands at this crossroads, in some ways gives us a description, gives us an understanding of what it was like for Jesus as he came. And as he thought about the place where he was, as he walks into Jerusalem on that great time of Passover and looks forward in his mind as he looks over the next 40 days before he goes back to heaven and then 50 days from Passover as Pentecost happens and he thinks about the promises of all the things that have been promised for this place. It says when he was on his way into Jerusalem for the Passover, as he, as he came into view of Jerusalem, it says he wept because he knew the things that were going to happen to this place. And so I look at Joshua as he stands here and takes this all in and realizes that he's now the leader and he has to lead his people and all the things that are going to happen. Joshua, in his heart and his mind, resolved in this moment that he was going to walk with God. He had a promise that God was never going to leave him, that God was never going to forsake him. And I want you to know that promise that God made to Joshua holds true for you as well. Wherever you may be, uh, wherever you may be dealing with, God is not going to leave you. God is not going to forsake you. Because that same story that we tell about God's blessing and God's promise comes to us through Jesus as well. And he is also with us right now, living with us and walking with us through the power of the Holy Spirit as we do our best to live out the promise of the place that he has given us. This country that we live in is built on a promise, a promise that we were going to forge a new nation founded in liberty and justice and what it meant for people to live in religious freedom and religious liberty to to serve God the way they want to. And this country, as difficult as the circumstances may be right now, is built on the promise of that blessing. Joshua could not have seen into the future and seen all the things that were going to happen. We can't see into the future and see all the things that are going to happen. But we know this. 
as we continue to be men and women of God, the promises of place are going to hold true for us as well. The promises that God gives us are, are going to be true, and just as true as they have been for the nation of Israel that still exists today on the borders that are described right here in the scripture that I just read. Joshua went to the Jordan River. God commanded him to have the priest lead into that river with the Ark of the Covenant. And that co Ark of the Covenant that represented what God had been doing in the people's life and the commandments and, and all the things that were there as soon as they got to the Jordan River. And it was, it, was, it was the time when the Jordan River was at its highest point. As soon as the feet of the priest touched that water, the Jordan River parted and all those hundreds of thousands of people walked across on dry land. And as they walked across on dry land, they praised God for his blessing and praised God for his leadership as God provided for them a way through the difficulties and the problems that they were facing. God's going to provide you a way through the difficulties and problems that you are facing as you walk with him. As they got to the other side of the river and encamped, the angel of the Lord came to Joshua and they talked together and and God gave him some instructions about how they were going to face their first big obstacle. And their first big obstacle was a city called Jericho. Jericho was a well-fortified city with high walls, and Joshua wasn't sure what to do. But God gave him a specific set of instructions, which I find absolutely hilarious. Imagine you have a great city, and you've got to conquer the city. How are you going to conquer it? Well, in the instructions that Joshua was given, they were to walk around that city with everybody, walk around that city in complete silence. Silence. Not just one day, not just two days, not just three days, not just four. Six days they walked around that city in complete silence. And then on the last day, he gets all his warriors together and all the people together and they have a big war council. And he says, here's what God's told us to do. This time when we walk around the city, we're going to have the priest blowing the shofar and we're going to make some noise. I can, I can just see one of Joshua's uh, generals raise his hand towards the back of the group and say, now you want us to surround the city and yell at it. That's the plan. <laughs> After six days of silence, now you want us to all gather around the city and we're all going to yell at it. And that's the plan. Well, sometimes when God leads us in specific directions, we don't always understand the big picture. We don't always see what God is doing even through this crisis right now that we're facing as a country. We can't always see the way through. We pray for our leaders and for the people who are, are running the county and the state and the governments. We pray for them that God will give them wisdom for us to see a way through this and be able to get over on the other side of this. And we don't always understand the reasons why things happen the way that they do. But, you know... There are some opportunities for us during this time to really see what neighbors look like in this place that we live. I don't know if uh, it's the same for you and your neighborhood, but I've been watching our neighborhood come together. I've been seeing people walking down the streets and, of course, keeping the proper social distancing, but starting to care about each other. I've seen people doing nice things for each other. Even our neighbors are picking fruit off their trees and leaving them for us to, to, to enjoy. And, and people are saying, hey, if you need some tractor work, I'll come over and help you with the tractor. And if you need some, you know, I see that this part of the church isn't, isn't in good repair. Can I bring my tractor over and, and repair the road? And uh, we've had all these kinds of things happening around the church because people are actually, in some ways, because of the social distancing, because of the quarantine, because of this disease, it's actually bringing people together in ways we could have never imagined. My brother Ben is, is a firefighter, an EMT, and he works for an organization called Samaritan's Purse, and they called his name and asked him to come back to New York City. 
And so for the past month, he spent the past month in, in New York City, in that great central park, which was setting up tents and quarantine places. And he ministered in that great city to those people who were sick and suffering and dying. I would have never imagined that that could have happened, but it did happen because of this disease and what's going on in our country. You may have an opportunity to do something for your neighbor. You may have an opportunity to do something for the people around you. And if you are impelled or compelled to do that, do it. Don't just stop and think about it. Just do it. Because Joshua's greatest test of leadership was always his obedience to what God wanted him to do. Whether it was going in and checking out the land of promise or or whether it was crossing the Jordan River when it didn't seem to make sense because it was at, at the high mark of the time when the floods came on the Jordan River, or if it was yelling at a wall. Whatever God wanted him to do, he lived his life in obedience. At the end of his life, in Joshua chapter 24, he got everybody together after they'd conquered all the land that God had promised them. There was still quite a bit left to do when Joshua... Uh, by the time Joshua was, with, was at the end of his life. But I want you to think about this for a minute. Before Joshua ever crossed the Jordan River, before he ever went into the land of promise and conquered the land of promise, before the walls of Jericho ever fell down, as Joshua had, had, had taken on this mantle of leadership that God had given him, he was almost 80 years old before he ever went into the land of promise. Before anything else ever happened, he stood at the Jordan River and said, God's going to help us take this land. I pray for 80-year-olds that have the spirit of Joshua. It doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're willing to walk in obedience to God, he can do amazing things in your life no matter what age or what stage of life you're in. But at the end of Joshua in chapter 24, he comes down to the end of his life. And he says to the people of God that have gathered together, Choose you this day who you're going to serve. Are you going to serve the false gods on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites that you're in the land with now? But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. God has provided you a place. God has provided us a place. God has provided us a place to live in one of the greatest nations that the world has ever seen. And we will get through this. The final chapters of our country have not yet been written. The final chapters of your life have not yet been written. But we need to come together and continue to come together as a people around the promise of the place that God has given us and make the same decision that Joshua asked his people to make so many years ago. He said, you can choose to serve the gods around you or you can choose the God who has given us this place. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will trust in Jesus. We will take him at his word. We will believe in faith that the promises that he has given us will continue to be kept and the promises that we live out are the blessings of the future that God has provided for us as right now he's preparing a place for us. So as I look at all the things that are going on and all the things that are happening, I rest in the same promises that Joshua received, that God is never going to leave me that God is never going to forsake me, that he's promised me a place to live and to, and to live in, in freedom and in happiness and in wholeness. He's promised us a place that no matter where we are, we have a place. If you look around the universe and look into the stars and you see all the, all the places that there are, I mean, who wants to live on the moon? Who wants to live on Mars? Who wants to live on Jupiter. I mean, all the things around us that we see, there's only one place that God has given us as his people, and that is this place we call earth. 
Let's work together as never before. Let's come together not just as a country, but let's come together as a planet to solve our problems. Let's let war be a thing of the past. Let's let all the problems that we think are so important turn and face the common enemy that we're dealing with. In Iran today, so many people are struggling with this disease. We want to call Iran our enemy, but what if Iran could be our friend? We look at China and we blame China sometimes as the source of this virus. Let me just tell you something. This virus has been around for a long time. It may have mutated into A strain and B strain, B strain and C strain, but it's always been a part of what's going on. It's foolish to blame China or the Chinese for this problem. It's so much bigger than that. The Chinese are not our enemies. The Russians are not our enemies. They don't have to be. We can create a world that's better and different in how we live in this place. To think differently about who we are and the boundaries around our countries and live together as the people of God in a new way, in a new paradigm, in a new way of thinking about what it means to be a part of God's plan in this place. So I pray for you this week that God will be with you and watch over you and encourage you and strengthen you. And I'd just like to pray a prayer of blessing for you right now that God will help you to live out the promise of the place that he has for you. That you will live in confidence and in enthusiasm and in excitement even through this difficult time. That you'll be a, an optimistic voice. That you won't be like the other ten guys who went with Joshua into the land of promise and said we'll never be able to take it. But you will live in the confidence that if God is with us, nothing can stand against us. So let's just pray together right now and ask God's blessing over you. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together to study your word, to study Joshua's life, to think about all the things that he did and all the things that happened. I pray, Lord, you'd help us to live with that same confidence and that same obedience. God, if there are people who are struggling this morning, strengthen them and encourage them and be with them and help them to realize no matter what age they may be, no matter what stage of life they may be in, you still have something for all of us to do, that all of us can be a blessing and an encouragement to someone else. Be with us and help us as we live for you and as we live towards the horizon of eternity today. Give us your strength as only you can. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless each one of you. Have a great week.